Hey there, Sonic Bloom. My name is David Berger, and the workshop I would like to give at your festival is called Meaning in Life and the Life of Meaning. My goal here is to enrich people's lives by helping them through my presentation to become more aware of the way in which our process of understanding takes place. So the purpose of this video is to give you guys a uh, brief preview of what kind of presentation I'll be giving if I get to do this workshop at your festival. Semiotics is looking at meaning. Meaning, or semiosis, is a process of understanding that every organism goes through, and the semiotic perspective is looking at these different ways that meaning takes place. After giving a brief introduction about this, uh, I will provide a little bit of introductory theory of what I call semiotics of nature. And this is the way that we can see how meaning takes shape in different forms throughout the experience of organisms. The organisms that I'm going to be focusing on mainly in my presentation are, of course, us, humans. Our semiotic process is very unique and rich, and I really want to bring people's attention to that. Animals, all animals, all life, in fact, goes through a process of semiosis. But we humans, we are the semiotic beings. We understand this meaning. We understand our very process of understanding, and we view things in terms of concepts. We understand objects and concepts in the terms of language, and in fact, we create abstract concepts, such as religious symbols, concepts of good and bad, abstract ideas like love, truth. So where we see animals going through a basic interpretive understanding process, we, the human animals, not only go through similar semiotic processes, but we are in fact semiotic creatures. The very fact that I'm able to give this presentation and talk about this kind of stuff is a semiotic understanding. We know this about ourselves, and yet typically people take our concepts for granted. And so one of the things that hopefully people will take away from the workshop I'll give is not to take our concepts for granted. The main point that I'll be arriving at, and that I would consider the center of this whole presentation, is our ability to ask this question. What does it mean? What does this or that concept mean? What does this experience mean? And what does it mean that I understand it in this or that way? These are the kinds of questions that we can ask. Things stand out in different ways. and. By not taking them for granted, we can take a mark of this and, for example, ask ourselves, why is the thing that this person just said making me feel this or that way? What is it that I'm bringing to the table that causes me to frame the experience in this way? And of course, being able to ask ourselves these questions allows us to frame our experiences differently. This is something we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, and what I really would like people to take from this presentation is an enhanced awareness of this taking place, therefore allowing them to take charge of their understanding, to truly step up to the plate as being semiotic beings. After the theoretical part, the real fun begins when we explore implications together. It was the ancient Taoist sage Lao Tzu who said, true understanding rests in not understanding. Socrates, the famous Greek philosopher, was known to have said, the more I learn, the more I learn how little I know. In the context of this presentation, I think these quotes are quite relevant. Each one of us knows that we can't be an ant. That's the plain and simple truth of it. There's no way that any of us can amount to a full and complete understanding of the world. But of course, the point of my presentation isn't going to be limited to making people feel like they don't know anything. In fact, none of this devalues the knowledge that we do have. Our experience of learning is in fact an expanding of understanding. As I said before, it's an increasing of our power to frame things in different ways, 
to look at things as meaning different things by learning different types of conceptualizations. All of these different ways of understanding can be stored within our minds and we're continually expanding the way that we're able to look at the world. At a personal level, take for example the way you describe yourself, the way you describe other people. We often think things about ourselves and each other, and if we take those frames of thinking for granted, well, then you're simply locked into one way of understanding. Am I gentle and kind with myself, or rough and strict with myself? So I really think we can live up to our semiotic existence and be truly semiotic beings. I really want to emphasize that we should be listeners. We should be questioners. Being semiotic beings, linguistic beings, masters of meaning in this world, allows us to really take a joyful and creative role in our own lives and the lives of others. It's so beautiful. Our experiences leave impressions. And yet, we are the interpreter. And the interpreter always has some degree of awareness over the way that we understand things. We, of course, find what's most comfortable for us and most useful. But my aim is for people, after this presentation, to see whether or not they've been stuck in what's comfortable and useful for them. If they've been stuck in some sort of pattern. We are really influencing and constructing the world all the time. And so I'll conclude, what is it to be human? We are storytellers. We are weavers of concepts into the context that is our reality. Thanks, Sonic Blue.